We are back now talking about more on the AFC South that I just finished talking about in the last segment to get into the final all-season grades for the entire AFC South. This was the highest graded division in the entire NFL, at least just from off of my memory, from remembering all the other episodes that I did. This was definitely up there as the highest graded, so I wanted to get straight into it, talking about the first team I had on my list, that being the Indianapolis Colts. A young, exciting, and improving team um, overall. They were able to keep their number one receiver in Michael Pittman for what is now probably a bargain deal, making $23.3 million per year on a three-year deal. You look at what everybody else is making, the highest paid receiver is making $12 million more than Michael Pittman, so that's an absolute great, absolutely great deal for the Colts. Then you also look at being able to keep the Forrest Buckner on a new deal as well. And the biggest topic around the Colts that I will get into later on in the show in a much deeper segment is that they were able to keep a lot of their key players like Kenny Moore, Zaire Franklin, Julian Blackman, all um, they're all back. They're all key pieces to this Colts team. And not only that, they were able to add a lot more youth and a lot more excitement to this team as if they needed any more with uh, drafting Vayatu Latu at the number 15th overall pick. The first defensive player selected in the draft, if not if not the first, and he was definitely the second because of the run of quarterbacks and the offensive influx that was surrounding this entire draft in this first round. So getting him at 15, good value there for, for the Colts to add to a position of need. And drafting A.D. Mitchell, again, at a great value in the second round. Um, arguably could have gone late in the first round, but a lot of teams skipped over him, and now he is added to a great wide receiver group with Michael Pittman that I just finished talking about, Josh Downs. And you add that to the dynamic playability of Anthony Richardson combined with Jonathan Taylor in the backfield. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be great to see, but that youth and that um, inexperience on the back end, on the defensive side of the ball, and really not to talk down on Anthony Richardson, but I think there will be more of a transition period that he only played four games, I want to say, in his first year. I think there's definitely going to be a learning curve there a little bit more, but this team should be more competitive, should be more um, fun to look at and how Sean Steichen builds his offense and continues to development. But I think overall for what they added, for what they got out of this offseason, I think a B is fair for uh, definitely improving on what they're building as their core, as their culture there in Indianapolis. But with that being said now, the next team I wanted to mention is the Jacksonville Jaguars. And you see there, just a little bit lower than the Colts there at a B-, minus because I liked what they added. Um, they definitely spent big. They spent a lot of money in bringing in Eric Armstead to keep Josh Allen, extending him to a massive deal. It was the right decision, but regardless, a lot of money. And also, obviously, a lot of money spent on Trevor Lawrence. Um, he's good. He's definitely capable of getting better. You, I don't want to just write him off after three years, two not so good and one really good one. I think with the situations with pressure, a lot of times you could get a very bad situation, but also a very good situation. You know, pressure creates diamonds or bust pipes. Hopefully for the Jaguars, this is a great situation for them because I like the addition of drafting Brian Thomas as well. I mentioned drafting or not drafting, signing Darnell Savage um, on the back end will improve their secondary, but I didn't like that they lost Darius Williams in free agency, almost offsetting um, what they added with Darnell Savage. I know they're different positions, but if they would have kept both of them, it would have made the overall secondary a lot more uh, secure and a lot more, um, just more efficient in my opinion. But how they how they sort of play out and sort of mask their deficiencies on the secondary will be something to watch at that defensive back position. And the biggest one, losing Calvin Ridley after a 1,000-yard season, I think decreases this offense's unpredictability, if that makes sense. You know, if you had still Calvin Ridley on this team, along with Christian Kirk, Evan Ingram, still Brian Thomas, and uh, obviously Travis Etienne, it's a nightmare for opposing defenses to know who the ball is going to. Now you've narrowed it down a little bit more. And uh, one of those players is a first-year player in Brian Thomas. So how much is he really going to contribute? You only really narrow it down. Oh, and also Gabe Davis, um, uh, not to forget about him. You narrow it down a little, your options to Evan Ingram, 
Christian Kirk and Gabe Davis. So it's still a very good group, but obviously would have been better with Calvin Ridley. And to lose him to the Titans also stings a lot more. But overall, they added Mitch Morse, Ezra Cleveland. It should help their offensive line. But how is the transition going to go with so much newness coming in? I thought a B-minus would be um, appropriate for them because, again, uncertainty around Trevor Lawrence. Can they live up to those massive expectations? We shall see. But then talking, just mentioning about the Tennessee Titans, we'll get to them. And I thought they had a very good offseason. A B-plus for them just because they are entering into this new era, new identity in 2024, being a lot more... Not offensive, well, definitely more offensive, but a lot more pass-friendly because with uh, Mike Vrabel, I thought they were more so on the run, and obviously you can't blame them because they had Derrick Henry right in the prime of his career, so that makes sense. It would be foolish not to use him that much, but now they're sort of changing into being more pass-heavy. You sign Calvin Ridley, obviously from the Jaguars. You sign Tyler Boyd, one of the best remaining free agents on the market. And you're, it's not all about offense. It's not all about just pass game and putting up the most points. They added to that defense, especially with trading for Legereus Sneed, signing Chidobe Awuzie. Um, That was big on the back end for a secondary. Now they're able to play a little bit more man coverage, have more people around the box to stop the running game. So that's always great for them to have some more security in there. But um, in terms of defensive improvements, in terms of one of the things that I thought they were lacking in, finding a pass rush you know, partner to Jeffrey Simmons or just on the edges or alongside him in the interior, I thought was something that they could have looked towards adding a little bit more, but maybe the market just didn't work out for them. But regardless of that overall and how they're trying to change, the fact that they're trying to change their whole identity almost and how successful they were by landing some of these big-name players all under now the new head coach and Brian Callahan. Um, I think for all their efforts and how successful they were, I think a B-plus was very um, appropriate for them. And also on the offensive line, bringing in Lloyd Cushenberry, who is a very good underrated center as well, and drafting J.C. Latham, who is getting a lot of praise so far in OTAs and mandatory minicamp. So I think they're set up pretty nicely on the offensive side of the ball if they want to lean more into the pass, but it still remains a question mark on how Will Levis picks up this new offense not only picks up this new offense, but how he improves from what he's from what we saw last year, where he had some flashes of being very good, making some awesome throws, but at the same time, there were some ugly games in there, some very indecisive throws that you want to clean up. I think he fits very well into this offense. They've done a great job of surrounding him with talent. He just has to go out there and put his part into the entire um, equation, but Regardless of that, big picture, the Titans did a very solid job starting a new era under Brian Callahan. So, that only leaves one team. I've been a fan of them this entire time. I I had to give them an A+. I had to because if it wasn't going to be the Texans, nobody else was getting an A+. They're the last team that I'm grading this entire series. So, nobody else has gotten an A+. It had to be the Texans as the last team to do it. Um... Like I mentioned, they spent big and they went for it this offseason. I think a lot of teams are very hesitant and are very scared, a little bit doubtful of knowing that they have a great situation with, you know, striking gold and finding your franchise quarterback, Tank Dell, Nico Collins breaking through. You're able to trade for Stefan Diggs. Even with all that going for yourself, going good for yourself, I think a lot of teams would have been content, comfortable with that and just, you know, cut it off right there. Nick Casario, their general manager, alongside head coach D'Amico Ryans, I wanted to praise them for being extra aggressive and being very um, straightforward and wanting to go out there and prove all of this team by bringing in Daniel Hunter on the defensive side of the ball. Um, Also, they added Aziz Alshair, I want to say, also as a linebacker to this team. And it also helps from a it makes it easier this transition a lot when you have great cornerstone pieces like a Jalen Petrie, a CJ Stroud obviously, a Tank Dell, Nico Collins, Will Anderson, Derek Stingley. They've done a great job of drafting these great players and now they're all still super young and that now they're serving as these cornerstone pieces like I mentioned, being extra aggressive and being extra or just being proactive in free agency and going out there and getting the players that you want to really go all in on this team. I really wanted to praise them because you don't really see that a lot in the NFL. And 
also adding a guy like Joe Mixon, um, they don't really need him, honestly, but adding him just really puts um, the frosting on the cake overall and how great this team just went from, all right, they're sort of good, you know, CJ's going to be great, but now everyone's looking at them as a potential contender for the number one seed in the AFC, really competing with the Patriots, with the Ravens. It should be exciting. It should be awesome. Their only weak point I would sort of point out would be at defensive back because I know they have Derek Stingley, but they drafted um, Lassiter. I want to say is his name from Georgia. I could have completely butchered that, but um, they added him. They're very happy with him, but he's still a rookie. If they add another corner, just some more help to that secondary after, um, I'm forgetting their corner that they had now that just retired. Um, regardless of that, if they add some more depth there, um, another piece there, a veteran piece, I think there would be nothing left to improve. That's the only thing, but I had to give them an A plus and I'd love to know what you guys think about it. Do you guys think I'm overdoing it on the Texans? Are you guys getting tired of me talking about the Texans? Um, but regardless of that, A plus for them, leave your guys' thoughts in the chat box or in the comment section afterwards, but that'll do it, um, for right now talking about the AFC South, but when we return, we're going to take a slight break from this division, and we're going to focus in on the AFC West, talking about the Los Angeles Chargers, and some of the biggest takeaways that sources closer to the team have pointed out that some of us outsiders aren't able to see from an external point of view, so I wanted to talk some more about that when we return in just a few seconds after this break. 